think if you if you if you have a foul Northwestern this year, uh, they've already had some good wins. They're going to have more good wins. Missing Law is obviously a, a big factor in that game. You know, we've been there before. We've lost guys before, and it's it, it's tough on your continuity, your continuity, your time, and everything. So, uh, all, given all that, um, I really like the way they played, and I think the game was, even though we got out, was a little bit closer than, than the final score would uh, indicate. Um, we just made enough good plays. Uh, they chose to do what they did last time is play off some people, and uh, we were able to, to execute. Uh, nobody could make, make nobody on our team could make a three yesterday in practice. I wasn't there, but I saw it on video, and, <coughs> and no one could make a three. And uh, as a result, uh, we were, we, they were worried. I, I guess I wasn't worried. Sometimes you, when you're when you don't have a practice the day before, it usually bodes well. So we're re really um, happy for our team to get another win, six and zero in the league. We're really happy that uh, Xavier and John can have that type of bit of a breakout game as far as from the perimeter, right? That uh, John, we've been we've been encouraging that action. John's been taking extra shots. Uh, Xavier has always taken extra shots, and so uh, played really well today against what I think is a pretty good team. So we'll take the W, six and zero. Uh, 20 games in the league, long way to go. 14 more in the league to go. And we'll just do our best to, on every one to prepare every day. So, appreciate it. But another, another thing I'd like to say is that our, our, our fans, it's Sunday night, 7.30 game, right? Students just got back 20 degrees out. And I look around and almost every seat seems to be occupied. It's almost at 95% capacity. So, it says a lot about our fan base here that on the Sunday night games were Many, many people might have that one relaxing night at home that um, they came to root for a Wolverine, so it's really special. Aria? John, you kind of alluded to earlier that uh, last Northwestern game they were playing off Xavier a little bit, mm -hmm. um, leaving him open. And tonight they did that again, but Xavier you know, found more success. What was different um, this time? Uh, the ball went in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. He's really worked at it. And I think sometimes, that's a good, great question, I think sometimes when that was the first time anybody played that way, and it sort of shocked him a little bit. And um, he did he didn't necessarily it wasn't as patient. And he, he's such a competitor. Um, he saw that as a personal affront to his ability. And this time it's just let just let it come to you. But he's been uh, he's been you know he's had a good game or a couple of good games since then. Illinois he had two big ones as well, and John did. So I think just familiarity familiarity in that territory, right, allows you to have, uh, and volume in practice breeds confidence. On your right with Noah. Uh, John, 17-0 seven, is a record to start for this program. Now, is, is this, I mean, we've seen sort of the unexpected scoring and getting, you know, from guys like Teske and Simpson. Is this a just well-rounded team? Maybe? Is it, is it, 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 I think as we go down the road, we're going to need that. I, I think there's been, you know, I, I don't want to compare it to any other teams because we've had some really, some great teams, and I hate comparing great to great. Um, but I do say that um, this team has a capacity. If we get, we get that out of those two, right, um, I wouldn't like to guard that. And then, and plus, there are also two premier defenders, so that's a really good mix when you, when you have that type of um, – they're keying on Jordan, they're keying on Charles, right? They're loading up on a, 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 a Iggy. So – and playing off those two, right? And then when you have that, that is pretty – it was well-rounded tonight, but that would be a great trend. Right in the middle of there. John, Michigan started and ended the first half with 10-0 scoring runs. What was the big key in starting those big runs? Um, you know, I, I, we came out. It, it, I, you're always worried when you when you win on the road, right? And then they're coming back to play you. And then we hear the locker room law is not playing, so that that let down. So I was really proud of us to be able to come out, right, and not be lethargic in any way. I thought we came out with great fire on our defense. And in offense, it just really clicked. So, uh, you know, the, the uh, when was the other 10-0 run? I get, I got it mixed up. When was the other one? At, at, the, end of the, at the end of the first at half. At the end of the first half. That was all about our defense. First half, they missed some shot. First half. Second half was all about defense. That we really, uh, we got some steals. I, mean, I, I was actually calling for a foul on the last play because we had three fouls to give. And Xavier just said, I'll do better than foul. I'll just take the ball from the guy and lay it in. So it was a, it was a good way to end it. But I think there were two separate things. One was very fluent offense. The other one was extremely good defense. It led to fast breaks. On 
you are right with Andrew? Coach, a week ago you were talking about Xavier shooting, you know, when he's open and there's other guys that, that are better shot makers than out today. He's hitting off the dribble shots and things like yeah. that, I guess. That quick sort of transformation in his confidence, I guess, where, how is that coming about so quickly? Well, he, he just went from a game, too, where they were, they were pressured him as well. So it's, no, it, it, it's, he's, this, this young man is really special as far as the type of grit and determination he has. So you put a challenge in front of Xavier Simpson, and he's going to eventually win. You know, time will run out sometimes in life, but he, he, he will eventually win, right, um, if there's a big challenge in front of him. And so that's what it is. People are challenging him, say you can't. I mean, he, he gives some pretty, some, some pretty good stares to people after he scores, and, you know, over them, around them, under them. We got another hook in today. You know, he's going to beat the odds. Over here on your left with Michael. Welcome back, Michael. Thank you. Uh, the fact that you guys are 17 0 and it seems like you're wearing you're Lions colors in here. Is that no, what you guys are wearing? Do you wear that, that, that to go to their games? Go ahead. The, uh, the, uh, the fact that you guys are 17 0 and it seems like your players really aren't phased by any of that. What do you think that says about where this program has come and where it is now? Yeah, that's right. You were with us at the beginning, right? Yeah. So. Um, you know, a positive culture just like well, it breeds itself, and I think that's what's that's what with the impact that Charles Matthews has had on this program to just play defense. And Xavier coming in here is and just saying I'm gonna I'm gonna find my way in the court. I'm gonna play defense. The the impact he has on the young guys that they look around and all the veterans are shooting before and after practice. They're they're early. They leave late. It's just I think people know there's one there's there's one proven formula for improvement. Now how fast you do it could be differential, but there's one proven formula. It's hard work, and that's what our kids do with limited distractions, right? Just don't miss class. We're not running them. We're not. We don't have issues in practice. You know, and, and they're still young kids. But at the same time, um, that's that's been a big thing too. When you don't have a lot of distractions, you really allow the coach to teach. Stay here with Mojo. John, I know you don't like to buy into the hype and keep your players one game at a time. But can, can you can you step back and look at 17 and 0, look at 31 and 1 over the last year or whatever? Can you step back and do you ever talk about that with your team or appreciate it yourself? Yeah, we just put the record on after every game. It was 1 and 0, and it's 2 and 0 in the league now. Six and I put 6 and 0 up before I put 17 on. I think that that that's really indicative of, of who you may be, um, or hopefully who you may be. No, it, it's just not a, it's, it's, we're such a day-to-day -day team, and I'm a day-to-day -day coach, and it's all right. I mean, this is a game like this. We know this, this would be, that they're just so good with what they run. They run pro sets. They show you one thing. They do another thing, and they're really good defensively. They're, they were leading the country, I think, in not giving up threes. So, um, not, Bob, I, I'd like everybody to, probably everybody would like to have make some great statement about being 17-0. It's just another game. It's another game, and, and we got another one coming up Saturday in Wisconsin. On your right with Zach. John, you called this team low maintenance before. You talked about mm -hmm. they, they go day to day. When did that become apparent that, that, that this was that kind of team? I think we've had, that's the way our teams have been for the last couple of years. Right? It really has been. There's been. There's been not many issues at all. And you go back, I think the. You know that when we when we won that championship in '11, the, the regular season championship, I think it was in '11 or '12. Um, that was a team that was low maintenance too, uh, to 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 a degree. And then and when we when we all of a sudden we started really taking off, and that's that's how you build the programs. That's where you just you, the the coaches they're they're player led because of the leadership at the top. But they didn't come in as leaders; they learned from the other upperclassmen. Back left with Charles. We know what kind of explosive offensive players Edie and Jordan are. Yep. We've seen what they can do. You get 18 points out of those two and score 80. Talk about what that means to you. Well, I, I mean, it is, first of all, for us right now, it was, it's tough to try and dial up guys and the game's just got to come to them. But people are playing us differently. Like, Illinois I wouldn't like it. I mean, past the day, they loaded up on, they loaded up on Iggy, right? They loaded up on Charles. So, what do we got to do in those situations? We got to find other people, and because there's open people, if you have, if you have four or five people sort of um, uh, clog in the middle on Iggy, then you're going to have to go elsewhere, or he's going to have to make some some great shots, which he made today. 
So if you take away one thing from us, our hope is that we have another answer. And, and the answer today was find the open man, pop the screen and roll, Xavier, shoot it in, just shoot it in. But it is, it bode well for us that we can get that out of those two. Chris, did you call in sick yesterday at practice, or what was up with that? No, it's a personal thing. Okay, sorry. And then um, just talk about this team's ability. I think they cut it to 13, and Charles drove it and, and got to the end one. Just talk about this team's ability to keep a mini run from becoming a devastating run and, and how they respond. It is. Is it, repeat the question one more time. Yeah, how they, they are able to keep a mini run from yeah, becoming yeah, a devastating Yeah, it's happened several times. But I think it's so indicative of the game today, a three, mm -hmm. you know, a turnover, and they're going the other way. And a 10-point lead can become a – or 20-point lead can become 13 like that. You know, and even if you get good shots, it can become like that. And so, uh, you know, if you have good defense and you learn from those mistakes, and we made some mistakes, and don't do it again, eventually they'll miss and you'll be able to go out and, and make them. And then, obviously, Xavier made all those plays. I mean, that, that was where all our scoring was. And then Jordan scored a little bit at the end, but that's where all our scoring was, was straight out with Xavier. And back left with Brendan. John, you know, it doesn't seem like these guys care who's the leading scorer, who's this or, or who's that. Um, I wonder from your past experience how delicate of a dynamic is that to maintain yeah. as the season goes on. That is, that's, that's what we have to manage all the time because it's not them. It's, it's the, this is normal expectations. You know, if any of you have children, how many times did you, your children played a baseball game or a, a, a basketball game and you said, you said, how many assists did you have? How many charges did you take is your first question. And that's what people ask, how many points did you get? Yeah, I know you won. But how many points did you get? And, and it's there's they just got to handle that and just understand that their day is another day, and it's all about you know winning the game. That's all it's about. That's our highlight. Is you know we talked about that before the game. A lot of people are going to have highlights, you know, film and, and you know, for their for each game they're going to watch it. It's not the, our highlight is hey, we're trying to breathe this thing. Our highlight is to win. Find a way to win. That's the highlight in the long run. All those dunks will go away. You want to play on a winning team, you want to play on a championship team, which is what we're after. Right down here with John. Talk about Xavier's grit. He had a couple of uh, not close misses from deep early. In that moment, does he need somebody to say, just keep going, or does he do You know what, the, the one that was called back, that went in, went right, that one right there, I, I was about to just say, settle down now. You're going to shoot it when you go back in, just settle down. And then I saw that one go in. And I said, no, he's OK. He's OK. And so you know, the whole idea is you want to get a point for possession. So he was better than that today, obviously. But he goes one for three all the time. We're going to take that. Right? We're going to take that. And so because he's going to do so, you get so many other people. And so but uh, him might go in five for 10. Now, that's, that's, a, that's more than a point of possession there for sure. So that's uh, 1.5 or 2. That's 3. No, never mind. <laughs> Coach, I think that's going to do it. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.